Shipping ain't easy, but it's necessary. I be getting weary, cause shit be getting scary. But sit back, relax, and don't you dare worry. Cause I be hitting wrongs with a righteous fury. Yes, sir, see, I am the only one. My name is Josh Dunn, gonna have some fun. Telling the truth, y'all can't handle. I might raise a scandal as I dismantle. The fake make them quake and make them shake. I make you bend, but never will I make you break. Just chill, yo, and don't be frightened. Open that closed mind, it's time to get enlightened. Okay, welcome folks to Gimpin' Ain't Easy Cause It Ain't, episode number 28. This week, as always, we are brought to you by Cafe Saint-Poil, where you can find me, Book Bird, nearly every afternoon, trying to read every book in the cafe cover to cover. I am currently still reading that drugs textbook, and boy howdy, let me tell you, it's great. I've spent a lot of time chewing, snorting, and sniffing the pages. Three kinds of different highs for a wonderful textbook on the history of drugs. 1982 was a great year. This week, as always, we are brought to you by Charlie's Club. Finally made it down to Charlie's in the last little week to see Sarah for coffee. It was nice. Charlie's most shots are 275 on Tuesdays, so even if you make some real bad choices, you won't go broke making them. And this week, we got a brand new sponsor, a throwback to the past. We're also brought to you this week by Brill Cream. And if you're me, a little dab won't do you. I used a whole jar, and I'm still five foot eight inches of pure frizz. Even my palms are curly. Folks, this is number 28, as I mentioned Uh, off the top there. I'm really, really excited to be bringing you this show. This is the first of what I hope is a two-parter series, the Grandmother Series. It is a wonderful honor to me. I am December 14th, 2021. I am 38 years old and I still miraculously have both my grandmothers living. They have been a tremendous support for me, showing me love ever since day one. And I'm so very excited to be bringing them to you. And also, if you'd like to donate to help keep this show going, uh, get in touch with me on Facebook or on our email, gimpinaineasy at gmail.com, and I will post that in the description of the video when it comes time. So stay tuned for the interview. Hi, Nan. Am I coming through? You're coming through. Yeah, nice talking to you, Josh. Yeah, you're coming through great too. Yeah, geez, you wouldn't believe we got so many. We got so many cords here. It's like I'm being choked by a thousand snakes. Is that right? Yeah. Thank heavens, it's not snakes. Yeah, yeah. Good thing it isn't. Good, good thing I'm not a drug fiend, or maybe them cords would turn and I start having hallucinations or something. So. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So. I'll, uh, he'll just. Uh, I'm just. We're just talking just for now. But no, uh, oh, we're rolling. <laughs> okay. Well. All right. Uh, so we're recording, and so I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna introduce you. Um, welcome, folks, to Gimpin' Ain't Easy, cause it ain't episode number twenty-eight. I'm here with a very, very special guest. Uh, this is the first of a two-parter series called the Grandmother Series. It is my Nan, Virginia Dunn. H- how are you doing this evening, Nan? I'm doing fine, dear. Nice talking to you. So nice to talk to you, and I'm so glad you agreed to do this. You, I know you're worried about you know doing an interview the first time, but let me tell you, I promise you, we've had worse guests on here than what you're going to be. <laughs> you don't know for sure. You haven't finished with me yet. <laughs> well, I suppose yeah, you could always prove me wrong. Don't don't start speaking in a different language, Nan. I'll get confused. Um, but uh, so I, I like to. Um, uh, yeah, Nan, for those who don't know, which is pretty much everybody, was born in uh, 1933, December 28th, exactly. And I believe you grew up in Mushaboom, didn't you, Nan? That's right. Born and brought up there. And uh, what what was it like growing up there in Mushaboom in the 30s and 40s? Well, it uh, wasn't that bad, I guess. It was, wartime was on, and... Shortly after I was born there, around that time, and everybody was poor, but everybody had the same problems. Nobody 
everybody help one another, and it was great, I guess. I think it was better than nowadays. <laughs> you, you think so? Yeah, like more of a sense of um, community and taking care of your neighbors and stuff, eh? That's right. Everybody took care of one another. Yeah, yeah, I think we do need more of that today's time. And um, I, when I was very young, I had met your dad, Oli, but um, what were your, your uh, Oli and your and your mom, I, what, what was her name again, and what, and what were they like? My mother's name was Amelia, and my father's name was Oli and Amelia Power. Yeah, and, and um, what, what are some of your top memories of them? My top memories? Or your best memories, maybe worst memories if you want, but, but <laughs> things that stuck out, I guess, growing up with them too. Well, my mother wasn't that easy to live with, but sometimes a lot of people are not. <laughs> but anyway, we my father was a very kind man, and he worked at the pulp mill in Sheet Harbor, and my mother was a housewife, and she, she had 10 children, all together, and it was only six of us lived. She lost four babies at birth. So things weren't always the best for them either. But uh, we all did the best we could. The little place, Mushroom, that I lived in, it was mostly a fishing village. But my father worked at the pulp mill in Sheet Harbor. And, uh, and summertime, sometimes he'd just for pastime, he'd uh, go lobster fishing. He had a few lobster traps, and he'd uh, do that for pastime. And uh, he got all, he paid 25 cents for a license then. Wow. And lobsters were sold for 19 cents a pound, the small ones, and you had to pay 25 cents for the large ones. 25 cents a pound, that is. So, uh, we had lots of lobsters, and the kids that went to school that took used to take lobster for lobster sandwiches, they thought they were poor people because they had to have lobster sandwiches for school. Yeah, no, it's that's I don't think that really computes to today's time. So, you know, in today's time, right and around here nowadays, lobsters, what well, you know, a big kind yeah. of a rare fancy thing. And and isn't it true? Yeah. I think you were saying one time the richer kids they used to have their lunch meats and bologna's and stuff and they'd make fun All of right. the poor they kids. Thought that was better, they thought that was better than lobster. <laughs> Boy, has yeah. the worm turned on them, eh? Yeah, my, my father, yeah, my father. Had, grew all his own vegetables for the winter as well. And in the winter time, he just had one local store, which wasn't far from where we lived. And he'd order a, a barrel of beef and a, a half a barrel of pork. Sometimes he grew his own pigs and pickled it himself, but most of the time he, he'd buy it and they'd buy a a barrel of flour for the winter or a bag of flour. And uh, everything, we never went hungry because we were always, it was a lot of different living than it is now. You didn't run to the store for everything. No. Everything was hand homemade. When them days to pro Dad, Oh, sorry, go ahead. And Dad used to have a few chickens and a couple cows sometimes and not always, but after the cows were not good to milk anymore, we'd have that for beef. Wow! So we were we were quite well off, really. <laughs> yeah, we were poor, but we we're, were well off. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't go hungry, lost, and like you said, there wasn't. A, no, there we was, didn't go hungry. No, there was no stores to run to in them days. Hardly was there. What was that? There was no stores to run to in those days. You had to have it gr grow That's it yourself. Right. I think. Yeah. Right. But, yeah, but yeah. I think we had the best of times, really. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds happy. I know you had some troubles with your health there, and 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 I don't think this is a thing nowadays. But you had. Uh, you had TB, tuberculosis, twice growing up, didn't you, Nan? Yes, I did. When I was nine years old, I had tuberculosis. And then when I was 17, I had tuberculosis again. Yeah, and uh, 
uh, and I think you are too. We're both fans of uh, Jimmy Rogers, and, and, and people don't realize he, he's singing about having them TB blues, right? And he really, yeah, right. he really did have TB and died of it, right? So that was a serious thing. Yes, I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there was quite a bit of it in a little. Well, the the Beatles had a little bit of Village I lived in wasn't very big, but there was quite a few people that did have it. So it just spread from one to the other. Yeah. Yeah. Glad we and don't. The, have... the best cure was rest. You had, I was at the TB hospital in uh, Halifax for six months. Uh, so I didn't have it as bad as some people had it. And my first boat, if it was, I guess, six or seven months, I stayed at home and supposed to rest. Yep. Yeah. And you got your rest, and, you, and now, I mean, you're going to be 88 in uh, two two weeks, right? So, so you, That's right. <laughs> you recovered some good from that TB, I guess, yeah. Well, I guess so, yeah, when I had a kidney out. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I was going to get into that a little bit later because I'm going in order here. But uh, you had you had told me this uh, what you're making, but I'd like to share this with everybody. What was uh, what was your first job you ever had? My first job was I looked after uh, a lady that was having two, having a baby. She already had two little children. I think one was two, maybe one was three. And I went and did the housework. There was no running water in the house. And there was no uh, plumbing of any kind. And we worked, uh, cooked with a wood stove. And I was about 13 years old at that time. And I I got, a, I think, a whole $5 a month. $5 a month in a place with no running water. That's, uh, so yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that would have that would have put us in... Uh, 46 or 47, so that's that's quite a difference from today's time. And uh, one question, I'm just looking at my notes here, I forgot to ask earlier. So you you were the oldest of, of your six, uh, the six years that of lived. Of the six that survived, yeah. Yeah, and um, you you often had to help out taking care of the younger ones, didn't you? Uh, most of the time, yes. <laughs> yeah, and did you did you have to leave school early for that, did you? Yes, I did. What do you remember? What grade was it? You left school. I was I, I got two months in grade seven, and then I had to quit school to stay home because my mother had to go to the hospital for surgery, and I had to look after the family. Yeah, and that that's just the way things were back in them days, right? So, that's right. Yeah. Do you yeah, wish, that's the way it went. Do you wish that you had had a chance to finish school or? Oh, yes, that's, that was my biggest downfall. I didn't get an education. like I, Nowadays, it would be so nice if I ha- had had an education, you know. It, it ruined my life in a sense, I think, because I, I think education is so important. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think so, too. And I think, uh, you know, you could have you had a lot more options, maybe, right? So That's right. That would have been... Especially later on in my life as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so I guess we got to cover most of the thirties and forties here. So I want to ask, uh, when, uh, um, when, and how did you first meet uh, Granddad there? I met your grandfather in Halifax. I was working at a doctor's, doctor and automaker's office, not his office. I was working at as a housekeeper for them. But uh, I went to a a restaurant just to have something to do on my time off, and I met your father at the restaurant. Wow. Your you mem- grandfather, I should say. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you remember what the restaurant was or whereabouts in town it was at? Or? It, it was down on Barrington Street, but I can't remember the name of yeah. the restaurant right now. I, I, I would bet it's probably not still in business no more, eh? What was that? It's probably not still around no more, that restaurant, I wouldn't think. I don't think so, no. No. And no. Uh, I think he he told me a story of uh, uh, many years ago when he was still living. He said he, he, he seen you in a restaurant and he said, uh, you were so beautiful, he just had to get talking to you. So I think <laughs> that might be how I don't know about that, but... Got started, yeah. Anyway. And um, is 
Jeannie had told me a story one time that that was uh, my grandfather's uh, eldest sister who who uh, di- died a couple of years back. But uh, she said something about uh, uh, one of your parents wouldn't uh, give permission to marriage, so you had to wait. Was there any truth to that? No, that wasn't true. <laughs> uh, I was nineteen; he was twenty-one. Yeah, and and you you didn't postpone it from an earlier time or something like that, no. I didn't what? No, it, you, you had you you hadn't meant to get married earlier, had you? No. Uh, well, I was in the TB hospital after I had met your father for a while, so I had to wait till I come home out of the hospital and that. But I guess it was about a maybe best part of a year after I got out of the hospital that we got married. Yeah. Yeah. And I had get out of this. Yeah, and then th- I think you were married, was it, what, uh, f- 53, I think it was? 1953, May the 18th. Yeah, I uh, I met Sam there uh, f- uh, May the 22nd of this year, so pretty cl- Is that right? <laughs> close timing, yeah. Almost yeah, right. 70 years later, yeah. Um, That's right. And yeah. uh, he was... Uh, he was away to sea uh, quite a lot in the early. Was it? Was it? It used to be nine months a year. He was away to sea, was he? He had been uh, at sea at one time for nine months, but he had, was supposed to do a six-month trip. But sometimes the ships got transferred to say out down South America somewhere, and they couldn't always get back when they were supposed to get on their vacation. But they were supposed to do six months on and. I think it was a month off at the time. And uh, sometimes they get into Halifax, and other times they wouldn't. You know, it's just according to where their trips were on the pure oil tankers. They never knew for sure. Sometimes on the bigger tankers, when they were going to get into Halifax. Yeah, in fact, um, I think Debbie, you're... Your Aunt Debbie, she was uh, two weeks old, no, four weeks old, I think, before he seen her. And your father was uh, eight months old, I think, before he got in to see him. Wow. So I sort of had the babies by myself because he wasn't around when they were, they were first born. <laughs> yeah. Which wasn't a good thing. It wasn't a good life, as far as that goes, that way. No, it was lonesome, I think, and a lot of responsibility. I was going to ask right. you about that. What, what was, uh, so what would a typical day have been like back in them days with young kids there in the 50s and in the 60s there? Like, what was, what was life like? Life was like, <laughs> well, I don't know. I can't think it was any different. You had, well, myself, I just stayed home. I didn't go to work, not like people do nowadays. I stayed home, looked after my children. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, I think you were happy to be a mother, eh? I think so. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed the babies. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, because I remember you know being being young, you seemed to enjoy you know young kids when I I was young and that, so that was uh, good. And then I think um, your your mom died right right around that time, didn't she? In the sixties, somewhere around there. Um, no, my mother didn't die till uh, in the sixty-seven, I believe it was. Okay. Yep. And what with, had she? Did she? What did she have that her health happened? Or uh, her problem was she had a brain aneurysm, and there was no warning of it or anything. She just got to the hospital. She only lived a few hours after she got the hospital. But she had this brain aneurysm. Nobody expected it. Yeah. No, that that's a tough way. I, I believe uh, Gus's father, my great-grandfather, Gus Sr., he, he had that happen to him. He just, he right. went to work and he was walking home from work and he just, he just collapsed yeah. dead. So, yeah, that's, uh, and she, could, yeah. When you get them in the brain, there's not, even if she would have recovered, she might have been a vegetable, you know. Yeah. You wouldn't uh, have a mind. But uh, people get aneurysms different places in their bodies. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, the brain's a bad spot. 
Um, yes, that's right. And you had uh, brought this up earlier with your other health, but uh, uh, you were, I believe, diagnosed with uh, kidney stones in, in 1959. And uh, what, what did the doctors do with the kidney stones there? Well, mine were infected so bad when they discovered I had a kidney stone. And they couldn't save my kidney. They had to take the kidney out. Yeah, and and my understanding is, uh, in today's time, um, they probably wouldn't have done that as quick. I don't, I don't know, but you know, they got lasers and all those no, things. Uh, no, no doubt, this day and age, I wouldn't have had to have it out. Not likely, they could have given me some treatments, you know. But uh, I went in the hospital and come home. I'm home without a kidney. Was that a big long recovery there? Or were you able to bounce back from that pretty quick? I bounced back pretty quick, and it, it never seemed to bother me too much that I did have only one kidney. I I worked just as hard as if I had two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, I think you worked just as hard as if you had four, I think. <laughs> yeah. You, you were always going in and cleaning the house and all yeah. that stuff. And then, uh, so go back to a bit later, in uh, 1977 would have been in March, uh, your first grandchild ever, uh, Melissa came along, and you were, geez, a pretty young grandmother there, because you, you wouldn't have turned, you only turned 44 there that December, and then... Uh, Is that, I never figured that out, tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah, you would have been, you would have been still 43, right, when Melissa was born. Right, okay. And then I, I come along, uh, Six years later, in uh, in eighty three, and yes, right. How how did you enjoy being a grandmother? Like, what? How did that change things for you, or what? Or what was what was it like? Oh, it couldn't have been anything better than having grandchildren. There's, there's nothing like it. <laughs> yeah, and especially especially you, because I got to see you a bit more than I see Melissa, because. Uh, as you know, you used to come down on the weekends and spend with me. Yeah, yeah. Before my uh, father got the house built there, I was down there, and I, I usually used to be. I come down every second weekend, right? So I remember, right. uh, you know, many Christmases and birthdays. And I, I think I mentioned to you a few months ago when we were talking. Um, when when I was really young there, I was into uh, magic, uh, like you know, magic yes, tricks right. and that, and. Uh, I think it might have been maybe my fifth birthday or something, but you had the uh, out to the dining room table there, and it was all lined with presents, you know, and the big centerpiece of it was this uh, magic set. So I just, I felt like I uh, won the lottery, you know? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of happy, happy times and good memories. Right. And a pet turtle oh, I... and a cat. And, uh... Yes, right. <laughs> Yeah, we used to have fun there on the lake. Yeah, we sure did. I was chasing the minnows and catching frogs and fishing. And That's uh, right. Yeah. And the odd trout. <laughs> yeah, we'd get a trout once in a while, wouldn't we? That's right, yeah. Your grandfather was a great fisherman. He liked to fish. Yeah, he was at memory. He was always talking about uh, catching Walter, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Big Walter, he was going to catch Walter. Yeah. yeah, so I guess this one gets a bit more tricky, but and I'm, I'm going to say some things just to explain to people. So I wanted to ask you when uh, Granddad's drinking got bad, uh, if it was always like that or just got worse. And I, I know you eventually did leave in 1990, but I just want to kind of explain this to people. So my grandfather, he told me, uh, he was my best friend, I think, ever since we could talk, and he even put the head that put to his tombstone. And I, I, once you left, that's when I learned about his drinking. I knew, you know, he never got bad with me, right? But he, I could see him not being the same and changing and sort of being foolish and stuff. But I do know that, you know, when think when he got bad, like you know, he he some he he'd pull out a gun and you know threaten and stuff like that. And, uh, it was a, yeah. It was a scary life. It wasn't It wasn't the best of a life living with an alcoholic. I'm sure he didn't mean to be mean, but he was mean at times. 
Yeah, and it really is the addiction, I think, there, right? Because it wasn't him, right? It'd be like, wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it just be a change, a Jekyll and a Hyde, like a switch, like you know? Yes, that's right. He could be as good as could be, and then the first thing, his mind just clicked. He was like a different person. Yeah. And I think well, I think that's important for people like, uh, you know, and I know and even myself, like, you know, a lot of people have some drinks and stuff like that. But I think that people should remember, like, if your personality changes and you become a different you person, shouldn't, yeah. you, you shouldn't drink. <laughs> yeah, get, yeah get, get some help so that you can if, right. if you can't get it off it on yourself, get get some help because right. it really it really can change uh, your life. And, right. and I know I know there were a lot of. Um, bad times, but you did stay a long time. Um, what What were some of the good times when things were going good? How How was that like? Oh my God, I can't, I can't even remember having real good times with your fa- your grandfather because if he, he, in order for him to have a good time, he had to drink. Right. And the thing was, when he started drinking, I was afraid because I always knew it was going to end up. And blaming me for whatever happened. It was never his fault. It was always my fault, whatever happened. And he'd always say, he didn't have a problem. I'd want to take him to see somebody about it. And he, he didn't have a problem, but I was the one who had the problem. <laughs> my problem was him, but he didn't realize it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, it might, uh, if, if, if someone's got an addiction like that, it might not be so bad for them because they're getting gooned up and trying to enjoy themselves, but for the person who has to be with them and tolerate them yeah, when they're like the, that. it's the families that suffer, really, for the alcoholics. Yeah. It, it's not the alcoholic themselves. They're killing themselves, but they don't realize it. Yeah. But um, it's, a, it's a family that has to suffer. Yeah. Yeah, I was so lucky he was able to keep his, you know, bad ways away yeah. from me, you know, but... Uh, right. Yeah, no, I, I know... Um, but you were only there for a short time at a time. You weren't there to... That's right. Yeah, and I was always scared to death when you were down that he would act up, but thank heavens it wasn't too bad. You know, of course, the one incident there, but what happened, but... Yeah, but, uh, yeah, that was... Um, I will. I'm not going to tell all the all the detail, but I'll tell this. So I was uh, four years old, and my father and grandfather were arguing. And um, my grandfather, I guess, I think I think my father was just pumping me, asking me a lot of questions, and uh, it it was really uncomfortable. And so my grandfather pushed him down the stairs outside, and uh, you you went out to look after them, and. and uh, took me out with you there, and my grandfather was on top of him. My father, yeah, oh, my my effing foot is broken, and it was. And uh, you drove him to the hospital, and uh, me and Granddad right. went in and finished dinner. Yeah, yeah, right. I took you down to the lake for a while there when they were into the, but it was, I was scared to death. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just didn't want you to have to see that. No, I know, and. Uh, yeah, it, I was happy that it, you know, it wasn't directed at me specifically, but so, you know, a lot no. of a lot of people nowadays say, uh, you know, trauma and stuff like that. But for me, what I went through, I, you know, I just watched it and I was I was kept far enough away from it that it didn't didn't personally hurt yeah. me. So. So, yeah. And that's right. That's uh, I want to ask you about but that. When you have to oh, live sorry. in fear all the time, it's no fun. No, no. And I. Yeah, I experienced um, some of that with my father, too, because he wasn't drinking, but he could have that temper that could just snap at any yeah. minute, right? So, so I, That's uh, right. I, and, you know, he, ne- I mean, he definitely acted up on that, but, you know, he never, he never really bad hurt me, or ki- but I was always, with my father, you never, never knew what he was going to do. You so. were just nervous. Yeah, always nervous. Sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's, oh, yeah, I want to ask you about that because I, I think I've had my own struggles too. And I, I think for the most part, I got it under control. But do you think there might be something like a, a bad temper gene in the, in the Duns? You know, is this something could be in our, in our family it, history that gets passed down, maybe? It sure could have been. I don't know. Yeah. I, and you don't know if I'm, it's. Yeah. My mother had a bad temper as well. So, so it could come from the powers too. As could have, right? Yeah. So we got to. But and, your 
but your grandfather's temper wouldn't have come from yeah from my mother, you know. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't know his mother uh, all of enough to know if he would have got it from her, and then his father he didn't even know his father. Who was that, Roy or Ray? What was that guy's name? Roy, Roy Dunn. Roy Dunn. Yep, and he. Yeah, he, but you. He never was around when your father was small either. No, but I mean, if it was something that, like, you know, you get oh, yes. passed but down or something, but yeah. It could have been, yeah. And it could be the circumstances, too. And But I think, you know, like, it's something, um, if you're predisposed that way, like, I've had to work really hard on it. And I know when I was, when I was younger, I used to be a lot more out of control than what I am now. And it's funny thing. Right. Like, I like to think, you know, I have it under control all the time, but the, but it, that's not, it's, it's close to all the time. But I'm t- and you know a little about this, Nan, but I just want to tell everybody here who might be listening. Uh, th- I think the last time I had it real bad was about two years ago because I was in a relationship that I, I didn't really want to be in. And, um, so I was, I, I was unhappy and, so I think I think if I stay away from stuff that really upsets me, I'm okay. But if I if I say, oh, I know this is bad, but you know this is the best I can do. So in that scenario, I was I didn't I didn't make no threats or nothing like that. But I was yelling and I was unhappy and stuff. And it's just such a night and day thing now because now I'm in a situation I want to be in. And I never the only time Sam ever caught me yelling was when we were stopping on the side of the road and I'm trying to pee. See, and I I couldn't. P so and and I, I was yelling but I got back and I got in the car and I Paul I said I'm not yelling at you Sam I said I'm just yelling about this stupid peeing right and she understood like she knew I wasn't mad right. at her it had nothing to do with that but right. so so that's pretty good if nowadays the only thing I'm yelling about is peeing right right well that's great and if you have somebody as kind and understanding it means a lot yeah it, it really helps you me know when you're not well especially yeah yeah. It means a lot. Yeah. And um, we're getting close here, Nan, but I just got a couple more. So so you, you had got out of that situation in, I think it was about 1990, and then... In 1990, in September, yes. Yeah. And then you, initially you got together with um, Bruce, and I, I think he was um, he was sick quite a bit, but uh, what was... Yes, he wasn't a well man, that's for sure. But we were good friends long before... But never, never what it what came to. But anyway, he was a, one of my best friends, and I went and stayed with him after I went from. First, I went to the uh, place here in, down in, here in Bridgewater for women to go to. Y- yeah, like a it? women's shelter or that kind of thing. Women's was shelter, right? Yeah. Yes. I, I actually yeah. didn't know that part. I didn't. That's is that I, right? Yeah, no. I, didn't, I never knew that. Yeah, I thought I thought it yeah, was. Yeah, I just... went to women's shelter, and then from there I went and went up to the valley and lived for a short time. Up New Minus. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then I bought a trailer, a mini home, and moved to town on Bruce's lot in Ellenwood, and from there. Stayed there a couple of years, I think it was, and then I bought a house and had to do a lot of work to it. Yeah. D- bought it real cheap. And, uh, in fact, I bought the house as cheap as I had bought the mini home. <laughs> but just that it took a lot of work, but it was it was well worth it to, to have a nice home. I ended up doing a lot of the labor myself. <laughs> yeah, and was that because he was kind of too sick to help you, or...? Well, he wasn't able to really. It wasn't yeah. too much he could do to help me. But he would have if he could have, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then I think he died probably around 1996 or something around there, I would say. Uh, 97. 97, okay, yeah. And then... Right. Um, and this is a, this is kind of a, a really a, a, a sad day because... This day, I believe, two years ago, um, Freddie had died, and I believe you... you two, got, year, two years ago today, yes. Yes, and I, I, I believe you, you got together with Freddie around maybe 2001 or so. Does that sound about right? 
2002, I think two, it was. Oh, two, yeah. okay, yeah. I'm, I'm close with my years. I might be off by one right. or two. But, but, uh, yes, and I, he was a wonderful person. Yes, that was that was my belief on him, too. Right. Um, uh, you, you guys did, like, um, a lot of stuff together, didn't you? Like, going on trips and uh, in the camp. We went that. on a trip to Nashville. Oh, wow. And then we used to do a lot of... He had a camper. We used to go camping to all the bluegrass shows and things like that, different places. But mostly out at Fox Mountain. Yep. And, uh, we camped. Yeah, there was a lot of lot of good shows, and you'd go to dances, yeah. and, and and you guys had a fair uh, number of friends too, didn't you? We had a lot of friends, but all our friends are pretty well all gone. The same as he's gone. They just as as you get older, you lose so many friends to death. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's. I think uh, that's one of but those. That's things. part of life, I guess. Yeah, if you live long enough, right? Like, just people die, and it's yeah. it's sad, but, like, you, like there's nothing you can do about it, right? But it's, it's too... Nothing can be done about it, no. Like, I, I seen a thing, a guy, he was, I guess, a hundred or something like that, and uh, he's, yeah, you know, I'm doing pretty good, but, like, I don't know who to call no more because all my friends are dead, right? So That's true. You know? That's the same as with me now. I don't have that many friends. They're all gone if not... The ones are not gone or not able to get out around, and they're they're real, you know. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this state that we're living on, people can't travel as easy. You might get sick, you know. This is a this is a rough this time. Is for it. people. It's hard to go out to meet friends or get fr- have friends because you got to be scared of this old COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I just. Yeah. I, I was actually really happy um, when you got together with, and it took me because I didn't know him at first, right? But it took me, um, it took me a while to get to know him. But I just, he was always just so laid back, and he could just fit into everything, and just so kind-hearted. You know, I I like he to was call him. very kind-hearted man. Yeah, and he, the, everybody loved Freddie. They used to call him Teddy Bear at the campgrounds. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a good name for uh, in my in my mind. I like to call him Steady Freddy because it rhymes, right? Yeah. Because this is his yeah, temper was no. very steady, right? But yes, I, I don't. Was, th- oh. I, I never seen him really lose his temper, you know. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. And I think I forgot to ask how how did you uh, how did you meet Freddy? I met him at a. I was with a girl a girlfriend of mine. We were at a concert in Pinehurst, and. Uh, of course, I knew Freddie not well, but I knew his Freddie's wife and my brother's wife were sisters. Basil. Oh, Basil. His, oh, okay. His wife was sisters to Freddie's wife Vivian. I knew her before, and she had passed away. She uh, passed away the year before, and so then I had met Freddie up at this uh, concert, and. He, he called me when he got home, and I, I, I was talking to him then, and then of course we got together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm really glad that happened for you. And I know um, times are can be really lonely now, but I mean, uh, Deb, Debbie was just down. You guys had a pretty good visit, eh? Yes, only it wasn't long enough. <laughs> no, and she had to go back too quick, you know. But I do enjoy her, her visits and that. Yeah, and she didn't. She didn't bring uh, Ryland. Ryland is uh, Nan's uh, great grandson, only great grandchild. Pr- probably be right. the only. Well, I don't know. Melissa and William might have kids someday. But well, he's he, he would have been in school today too, right? Oh yeah. He's five years old. He just started school this year, and with the COVID, he doesn't go too far either. <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they make those poor kids stay. I think right up till a couple of days before Christmas. So if it was up to me, I'd let the kids out December first. You know, stay home, relax, yeah. and have parties. Right? You're supposed to enjoy. I being think there. in New Brunswick they're leaving them out early this year. Oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So um, me and you have talked before, and you said, and I agree with you. I think you would have done wonderful at this, but you said. Uh, uh, you you would have liked to have been a been a nurse, and um, do you think that that was something that you actually 
could have done or was just life too hard with the family and kids and anything like that or no i guess when i was a kid i used to think i'd like to be a nurse you know yeah anyway my daughter ended up being a nurse <laughs> yeah you pe- she got it through osmosis i guess or something through you probably yeah i don't know but anyway <laughs> yeah i guess i always like to help on people you know yeah as much as i could yeah, and you've definitely had a lot of, you know, taking care of people to do over your days, including me, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was my pleasure. <laughs> no, and mine too. I mean, you remember that sometimes, Nan? French toast be coated in brown sugar. <laughs> right? Yeah. Coat that French. And then you saw. You like your French toast? You liked your French toast, didn't you? I, I, with that sugar, I really like this. Yeah, that, 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 oh geez, that was the best part. That sugar on, dude. Um, right. Yeah, and so yeah, we talked about most things here, but I want if is there anything that you regret or that you wish that you'd done differently? Oh, well, it's hindsight, but I, I'm sure I, if I'd have known how life was going to be the way it was with your grandfather, I don't, I don't imagine I would have married him. Right. But we don't know that till it's too late. <laughs> yeah. And when you're young, you're foolish. <laughs> yeah. And I think, like, uh, we might have expectations more of that things can change when we're younger, you know? And then. Yeah, I, th- I always thought that your grandfather would. Uh, he'd, he'd end up getting where he drank a lot. I always thought he'd get sick enough that he'd be sensible enough to. To quit drinking, yeah. And I always thought, well, once he quits drinking, he'll he'll change. He'll be better, you know. And I always thought life would get better, but I I live with that thirty seven years, and I guess well, I was threat- correctly my I just had had surgery, and he threatened to hit me in my where I had the surgery, which was across my back, and uh, that was it. Yeah. I just I figured. I've had enough of it. Yeah. 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 And again, I think I want to reiterate this stuff to anybody out there listening. If you've got family or friends and um, their addiction, I mean, addictions can be bad for your health anyway. But but if they if they change your behavior and make you treat people bad, you really got to get that help because it could it could not only save lives, but just improve lives and give people people a better quality and a chance and and i i think looking back you know it's too bad that he didn't have like a a, you know a a kidney problem or something himself that he had to go to the hospital and he had and then you know maybe something that he that he could have quit because you know he he would call me sometimes before school see and and at seven in the morning and he'd say you know josh tell me to stop drinking and i would and i think that sometimes he did for like a couple weeks you know maybe two weeks yeah he that's all he could go. Would be two weeks would be the longest, I'm sure. Yeah, but then he so. Yeah, sometimes I'm sure he didn't. He didn't want to maybe drink, but he wouldn't do nothing about it. Yeah, and and when when you're hooked like that, you got to get help. Uh, and there's no, yes, right. Yeah, he didn't. Want, he didn't want help. See, Cause yeah. he, he 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 didn't want help as much as he wanted the liquor. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. that's addiction, right? So yeah, he was addicted. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, and going to see when he was young, I suppose, didn't help any. No, because you geez, away from your family like that for these nine months at a time in this ridiculous. Uh, yeah, and I, I believe this was a, a true story because he didn't uh, he didn't tell a lot of tall tales, but he told me because I think he first got on them ships around uh, fourteen years old or so, right? Yeah, he was only, he was only a kid himself too when he started working. And I don't know if you ever heard this one, man, but he told me he was on there, right? And he had some pop on him and the older sailors were getting him to force him to well pressuring him to drink right they took his pop oh, yeah. they took his pop away right and he had some kind of hard liquor poured in his mouth from the bottle or whatever right so he kind of oh, yeah. he might have got pressured into it st- for at least for starting you know so you never know Could have I, ne- I never heard that story though <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and uh 
So I got this fine. I told you a little bit about this, and uh, this is whatever you think, Nan. And lots of people uh, have worse answers, and I can tell you right away since we've been doing this, uh, you have put on a better show <laughs> than a lot of these other guys. So I really appreciate that. I, I didn't hear you there. I said I said you have put on a better show than some of these other people. Um, but but oh. <laughs> but uh, so I want to ask you to close her off, Nan. Uh, what do you think the meaning of life is? Well, I'll tell you what I get. I don't know if this will, if if it's. But anyway, this is my thoughts. Anyway, I guess you have to accept life as it is, and because there's no, there's not much we can do about it, is there? I think that's right. Just try, just try to be your best kind to one another and be thankful because there's always somebody worse off than you are that's uh that's absolutely right and i think there's a lot of people worse off uh than me yeah there's always some i know i've had a hard life in lots of ways in the last years i had a good life but yeah. i know there's always somebody that has a lot worse life than i have yeah, so there's like... And I'm, I'm thankful to, that I got through life this this far in life. You know, not, a lot of people don't live to be almost 88. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. There's a lot to be grateful for, isn't there, Nan? Yeah, there sure is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to just thank you so much for doing this, Nan. I'm just going to do this little outro, like the close off while you're still on here. But uh, I want to thank everybody for listening to this. That's my, my Nan, Virginia Dunn. And hopefully we'll be back with uh, Winnie uh, real soon. And this is the close out, like I tell you every time. Um, when you get down, uh, sorry, um, this has been Gimpin' Ain't Easy because it ain't episode number 28. And uh, remember, like I tell you every time we close off, uh, especially when you're getting down, you look yourself in the mirror, you give yourself that Ric Flair, woo, and tell yourself, I am the greatest of all time. I know I am.